Forgetting to pick up your keys before you leave the house is bad. Discovering that that was your one chance to pick up your keys and now you can't get back in your house and your house is lost to you forever is a nightmare. One I had. Also, my teeth fell out. Obviously, this would never happen in real life, but it can in video games. On occasion, you can find a cool and or unique item is only up for grabs during a brief window of opportunity, after which it's gone for good. Here then are seven amazing items that you might miss forever if you're not careful. But we're spoilers for the following. If I've learned anything from trying to collect a lock of hair from every single Backstreet Boy, it's that it's frustrating when you can't complete a collection. I'm gonna get you one day, AJ McLean. So imagine our frustration when we were playing Fallout 3 and found out a certain rare few of the game's many collectible Vault Boy bobbleheads can be missed and lost forever in the capital wasteland. If you're unfamiliar with Vault Boy bobbleheads, you might be wondering what anyone in the post-apocalypse wants with off-brand Funko Pops. Two things. One, you have a display stand for them in your house in Megaton, and if you're missing any, the entire thing looks like garbage. Honestly, I can't even look at this right now. And two, they grant a permanent boost to your stats, which will probably stop you dying or whatever. Although why I bother living with this incomplete bobblehead collection, I will never know. Any aspiring collector should know in advance that you can permanently miss four out of the total 20 possible bobbly boys. If you don't spot the one in your father's office in Vault 101 before you get locked out forever, you'll never have a bobblehead wielding a large syringe and extra points in your medicine skill. If you don't pick up the one in Colonel Autumn's quarters in Raven Rock, you miss out on a bobblehead with a ray gun and points and energy weapons. Accidentally break the lock on a door in a house in Arafu and your repair stat will permanently remain lower than it might have been and you don't get this cutie with a spanner. And should you decide to nuke Megaton for the lols before you rifle through Lucas Sims' house, you'll lose out on a precious stat point in strength. Once you've got the bobblehead though, fill your boots. Ah, my precious giant-headed little child. Armed with the knowledge that you could permanently miss some of these valuable bobbleheads, you're going to want to really take your time searching every nook and cranny so you don't leave anything behind. I'm sure your missing father will turn up eventually. Hope he wasn't in Megaton. Damn you, goddamn both of you! Well, now calm down, who cares? You should have shot him 20 years ago, he's dead now. You are a sickness scum like you and you, Plato. Come on, draw! Why? I said draw, goddammit! No. If there's one thing we spent a lot of time doing in Red Dead Redemption 2, it was settling on the exact right multi-tone half chaps to set off the rest of our outfit. Come now, don't doubt yourself. That looks excellent on you. Thanks, Anthony Taylor. Best character in video games. A close second place for the thing we spent most time doing, however, was shooting people, because this is the Wild West, and shooting someone is how you said hello back then. And goodbye. Kind of like aloha in Hawaii. Anyway, with the amount of shooting you do in Red Dead Redemption 2, it makes sense that you want to be using the best guns available, and the game certainly doesn't disappoint in that regard, offering you loads of elaborate, ornate and exotic shooting irons with which to perforate some cowpokes. But if you're looking to complete your collection, be warned that there are several rare weapons in the game that it's possible to miss, and once they're gone, they're gone for good. Most notable among these are the unique handguns wielded by four of the five duelists you encounter in the side mission, the noblest of men and a woman. In this quest, Arthur is asked to track down a series of legendary gunslingers to get quotes for a book being written about one Jim Boy Calloway, a shootist of some renown himself. Cowboys being the way they are, all but one of these encounters quickly devolves into Arthur shooting the other gunslinger. Or chasing them across a train and then shooting the other gunslinger. Or Wow, okay, exploding a load of pig manure over the other gunslinger. You did not! And then shooting them. Once your interview subject is well past the point of giving any answers ever again, you can help yourself to their sidearm, all of which are unique and beautifully designed, with intricate metalwork, engraved grips, and gold finishes. They're also all missable. Forget to pick them up after you drop their previous owner, and they're gone for good. 
This is most heartbreaking in the case of Calloway's Revolver, a unique Schofield that you get from the mission's final duel against Boy Calloway himself. Lavishly engraved and with the words Canis Canem Edit written along the barrel, Calloway's Revolver is both a reminder that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and also that Bully was good and that Rockstar should probably make another one. Of course, it's easy to get caught up in the moment of the duel and walk off without the gun, so if you want our advice, just avoid that whole scenario and gun Calloway down the second you meet him, I would. Fred sure don't like people. Hey, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Calloway. Read the revolver. In my father's name! <sighs> Direct me as you will. The dictionary defines flail as to wave or swing wildly. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh, oh wait, this is second meaning. In the context of Baldur's Gate, a flail is a threshing tool or weapon consisting of a wooden staff with a short heavy stick swinging from it. A good example is the Flail of Ages, which can be acquired in Baldur's Gate 2 when exploring Da'ani's Keep in a companion side quest called The Da'ani's Keep Has Been Invaded. Guess what's happened in Da'ani's Keep? Should you have a thorough look around the keep, you can find three flail heads on the ground and upper floor, cold, acid and fire. Attach these flail heads to the handle found in the Da'ani's Keep Forge and you'll create the Flail of Ages, which is a pretty dull name for what should have been called the Triple Nunchuck of Freezy Burny Acid. However, if you don't pick up all the pieces before you leave the keep, you're left with a lame, partially finished weapon or stick that you can't go back to fix. What's more, if you don't obtain the Flail of Ages at that point, you can never get it fully upgraded to the five-headed version, which adds electrical damage and is, I want to say, five times better. That's just maths. That's right, say goodbye to the quintuple nunchuck of Freezy Bernie Zappy Acid. I am available for freelance weapons naming, developers of Baldur's Gate. In the history of the land of Skyrim, the region was ruled by dragon priests who spent their time researching arcane knowledge, serving their dragon masters, and presumably conducting the odd dragon wedding. Most of these priests are long gone, but a few of them became so powerful that they defied death and became mighty unliving liches. And as in most cases, eternal life comes with a side order of a serious attitude problem. Skincare routine could do with a bit of work as well. I can see why they wear the masks. Most of these mask-wearing dragon priests can be found at any point in the game, simply by travelling to the appropriate location on the map. If you do manage to beat one in combat, you can steal their dragon priest mask, each of which confers different benefits. And all of which make you look like a sort of high fantasy Iron Man. There is one mask though that you're liable to miss if you're not careful, the Narkrin mask. That's because its owner lives in an area of Skyrim called Skuldafen, which you visit only once during the game's main quest. And once you leave, you can never return. A bit like the Olive Garden. Although thinking about it, that's worse, because once you're banned from one of those, you're banned from all of them. I've heard. Defeating Narkrin earns you his mask, which adds 50 points to your magicka, 20 points to your destruction magic, and 20 points to your restoration magic, turning you into a pretty powerful mage instantaneously. Not forgetting, of course, that it makes you look like a medieval Tony Stark while you're at it. And now to enjoy the Iron Man style power of flight, which I'm just going to go ahead and assume that I have. Ugh. Yeah, you know what? That's on me. We love the Wisp. I think it's got something to show us. Careful, it's not to be trusted. Geralt from the Witcher series loves swords so much that he carries two of them at all times to avoid hurting their feelings by picking a favourite, I assume. And there are lots of swords to collect in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, enough to build six or seven Iron Thrones at least. <laughs> then everyone can have one! God, that should restore peace in Westeros. Job done. Who needed eight seasons? <laughs> However, some are more precious and elusive than others, and one blade that in particular might catch the eye of collectors is the one known as Vitis. 
Unlike Geralt, however, it only appears once in the entire game. Honestly, that guy's everywhere. Vitus is hidden away in a magical realm created by a wizardly dude, which can only be accessed while reading the book known as The Land of a Thousand Fables. Geralt does just that in the quest called Beyond Hill and Dale, transporting himself into a world of wicked witches and big bad wolves who are also drunk and French for some reason. Oh, what now? Not on your life. I can barely stand, I'm so hungover. The so called Fable Sphere isn't just full of fairy tale whimsy, however. There's also a dead knight in here who you can easily miss, because you can only find him by following a Will o' the Wisp. Knight Strange. Doesn't look like he's out of any fairy tale I know. It's on this fallen hero that we find Vitus, with its elegant hilt and brutal boost to your magic stats. Once the mission is done, you can't return to the Fable Sphere, so you need to get it then, or lose it for good. And if you're thinking, great, but this doesn't match my outfit, hold the phone, Tan France. Because you can also loot the unique iridescent Toussaint armor set, which brings to mind a dragonfly. Or a car from the Fast and the Furious. You know, just with the, without the neon underlighting. Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is one of the most beloved science fiction novels of all time. The same cannot be said of the 1984 text adventure based on that novel because it was constantly trying to kill you. The books would never do that. I mean, unless they fell off a high shelf or something. Hefty. A lot of this was down to the game's design, which was heavily time-based, which meant that it was extremely easy to miss stuff that was crucial to your survival later. The most famous example of this design ethos comes in the form of the Babelfish, an item acquired in the course of one of the most legendarily difficult and obtuse puzzles in video game history. One that, if missed, means game over for you, the player. Not straight away, of course, that would be too easy. Just know it's coming, further down the line, and that anything you do between now and then is essentially pointless. Video games are fun. The Babelfish itself is an amazing item and something that I absolutely wish existed in real life. It's a fish that you put in your ear that automatically translates any language into your native tongue. The problem is, the Babelfishes are dispensed from a vending machine, and every time you try to get one, a new obstacle pops up that prevents you from grabbing it. You've got exactly five turns to figure this problem out, a problem with an illogical solution that is never hinted at, and that also requires some other missable items from earlier in the game. Once those five turns are up, if you've not got a Babelfish in your bathrobe, the game became unwinnable. It was such a hard, unfair jerk of a puzzle that the publisher even started selling t-shirts which read, I got the Babelfish, which, haha, fun, but maybe fix your puzzle first before you start selling t-shirts laughing about how unplayably difficult your game is. Plus, it's made me think about how Babelfishes don't exist in real life, which means I'll never be able to speak French, which makes me tres triste. What the hell does that mean? <sighs> two things about ghosts. One, they're scary. Two, they don't like it when you try to steal flowers off their grave. What? They weren't using them. Another thing that a ghost isn't using and doesn't need is jewellery. So tell me why it is that in Fatal Frame 3, the hostile phantom known as Kyoka doesn't want you to have her earrings. Rude. The Echo Stone earrings are fancy antique earrings with mystic properties and, more importantly, you're going to need one of them to get the happy ending in which co-protagonist Kei Amakura doesn't wind up as a smear of soot on a sofa thanks to the tattooed curse. Oh, nothing gets ghost soot out. Maybe time for a new sofa. The catch is, you can only acquire the single earring you need in a new game plus of Fatal Frame 3 late in that playthrough in hour 10. That is to say, at the point when you've nearly completed the game two times over. <laughs> to get your hands on this talismanic trinket, you've got to get into a hidden room and find a secret diary, then fight Kyoka, the unfriendly ghost, who is just terrifying here. then obtain the holly key, then use the holly key on a locked drawer on a dressing table in a different room, and finally score the elusive earring.
In this and only this way can you save Kay from getting got, your sofa from getting ruined, and achieve Fatal Frame 3's second happier ending. But this is a late game side quest that's missable, meaning if you don't obtain the earring here, your only option is giving up on Kay or completing the game for a third time and getting it right then. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think my nerves can take much more of this. Look, I'll put the flowers back. Stupid greedy ghosts. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching this video about the amazing items that are missable in video games. But one thing you don't want to miss, that's right, it's our weekly shows. Up here we've got Show of the Weekend from Outside Extra. It's a rip-roaring, rollicking roller coaster of good times. Down here is Show of the Week, which is a rip-roaring, rollicking roller coaster of good times as well. Uh, yeah, they're good, they're a good time. Check them out and we will see you next time. <laughs>